Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so excited today again to welcome you to your favorite glad devotion. This, as you know, is your center for biblically authoritative teachings. Why do we say this? Because on the Gula devotion, you receive the right division of God's word. The Bible says to ministers of God and children of God that we should study to show ourselves approved unto God. Work men who will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. So there is the wrong division of God's word. On the good life devotion, you receive the right division of God's word. And that becomes the unadulterated truth that you need for your growth. This is how we inspire you all the time to ensure that you become an ardent sponsor of the glad devotion. How? By consistently praying and consistently inviting people. Become an ambassador of the glad devotion in your locality. Begin to watch glad devotion in groups and teams. And commit something financially to its expansion. Take it to a new media platform, a radio station, a TV station. Your life will be a blessing. Someone has brought it here. And that's why you're watching now. You can take it to another person. It's like the gospel of Christ. Peter and Cole got it. Others got it. The, the, the baton kept on passing. And today, we are here sharing the same gospel. Take it to someone else. Your life will never be the same. We've been sharing on the subject of the keys of the kingdom. And we first made it clear that the real Christian life in Christ is not a complex one at all. It's a very simple one. And why is it simple? It is simple because being in Christ is a birth into the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, we use keys to open specific doors. So if you have the key to a door, you don't need to struggle to get that entrance open for you to access whatever you need. And, but we made it clear to you that the average Christianity you are seeing today is one of no use of keys, but rather struggling with carpenters and bulldozers to break doors. And that's why you can you always almost hear breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. But that is not the pattern of the life of a child of God. Like I said, in the beginning stages of the church, knowledge hasn't increased. And that's normal because the Bible makes it clear that the church was going to begin as a baby church and grow till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto the perfect man. So the church definitely was supposed to begin somewhere. But many have gotten so used to that beginning way of living of the church that they've not moved on to look at what God really has for us. So a good number are living a very complex Christian life with a lot of struggles, requiring breakthroughs everywhere, struggles to live in health, to get basic necessities and all that. We shouldn't be. The real Christian life is a simple one. Why? You were born into the kingdom, you are a citizen of the kingdom, and in the kingdom, we use keys. Then we started looking at these keys one after the other, and the first key we looked at is the key of knowledge. Jesus warned the lawyers in Luke 11 52 that they refused to enter into the area that belongs to them in the kingdom but they also prevented others from entering by withholding the key of knowledge in Hosea he said he was going to reject or he will reject priests that means ministers of God who reject knowledge and he'll do the same to their children so we said that the knowledge of the word of God is so important and he showed us in that episode that it is through the knowledge of Jesus Christ who has called us to glory and virtue that everything that pertains to life and godliness becomes accessible to us. So if you missed that episode, go watch it. Today we are going to move forward and look at the key of understanding. So understanding is an aspect of 
the keys of the kingdom that Jesus said I will give to the church so that when the church binds on earth, it will be bound in heaven. When the church loses on the earth, it shall be loosed in heaven. Are you ready? Shall we share any word of prayer? Dear Father, we love you. You are so beautiful, so excellent, so lovely. Thank you for meeting needs amazingly, even as your word comes forth right now. We celebrate you for your unending love and the mystery of your works in our lives, now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the key of understanding. Our mystery is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Proverbs 4, 7 says that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. Praise God. We put here that another important key in the kingdom is the key of understanding. As important as wisdom is, you cannot function in wisdom if you do not have understanding. And that is what our opening scripture shows us. It says, with all thy getting, get understanding. If you look at the verse very well, Proverbs 4, 7, it says that wisdom is the principal thing. So the number one thing, the first thing in life is wisdom. So it says, in this world, get wisdom. Now remember, you are speaking um, before the New Testament, sort of, in Proverbs, through Solomon. So it says, get wisdom. Now when you are born again, I said that you are born into Christ. In him are hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. So the born again has been born into wisdom. Wisdom is actually at work in the born again. Why? The born again has been intermingled with the Holy Ghost. Whose ministry is wisdom? If you read Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 all the way to about 4, that talks about the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Ghost that was going to be on the Messiah. And it says, the, the spirit of wisdom. You see? So, in the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost ministered wisdom to them. But now, we are born again with the divine nature. So, wisdom is part of our lives. And our oneness with the Holy Ghost makes that wisdom, I mean, practically expressive. So, a child of God who does not live in wisdom is not because he lacks wisdom, it is because he hasn't grown to express his divinity. So you go to the book of James and it says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. It is not because the born again lacks wisdom. He's letting you know that at the babyhood level, you will think no, because I lack wisdom. No problem, you ask. In other words, interact with God. But when you mature, you get to know that you are the expression of wisdom. But what exactly is wisdom? Wisdom is that ability to use the knowledge of God's word. So you can have knowledge of God's word, but if you don't put it to work, then you are not functioning in wisdom. So the skill, the ability to use the knowledge of God's word is what is called wisdom. Wisdom is what? The ability to put knowledge to work. But before you can move from knowledge into wisdom, in between knowledge and wisdom is understanding. Until you understand knowledge, you cannot put it to work. And I think that's what has happened to a good number of God's children. They have knowledge of God's word, but they just find themselves unable to walk in that knowledge. And it's because they have not functioned or they have not stirred up their understanding. What then is understanding? And why is understanding such a powerful key in the kingdom of God? Let me first define understanding for you. We put here that understanding is insight into the meaning of knowledge. So knowledge is like the what of the thing. What is it? You acquire information, you become acquainted with something. And it's a reality through the Holy Ghost. Now, then you ask yourself, why this thing? In other words, what does that mean? What is the meaning of it? So getting meaning, insight into what you know is what is called understanding. Then now that you have understanding, you say, oh, how do I use this? So the how 
The putting to work of the knowledge is wisdom. Did you get that? So knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Knowledge is the acquisition of information, acquaintance with truth. Then the meaning inside into the knowledge is understanding. And that positions you to be able to act. It empowers you to, to function, and that is wisdom. So if you have knowledge without understanding, you cannot function in wisdom. That's why I said wisdom is very principal. In fact, it is the principal thing. But with all you're getting, make sure you get understanding. Because without understanding, you will not be empowered enough to, to function in wisdom. Did you get that? So, why is wisdom such a powerful key in the kingdom of God? Remember, we're talking about the keys of the kingdom. The key of knowledge, so powerful. Now, the key of understanding, what does understanding do? How is a child of God able through understanding to have such a simple life in the kingdom? I'm going to explain that when I return from this short break. So don't go away. I'll be right back. Hallelujah. Do you have a copy of this month's Emancipator? The Emancipator is a tool by which millions will receive truth and be born again. The entire body of Christ will come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to live as icons of Christ. Call 0249-293688 to order for your hard copies today or visit finalglobalmovement.org to download a free soft copy. This book, Daddy Holy Spirit, is a classic on how to work with the Holy Spirit. Working with the Holy Ghost is very important in being relevant in this final book. And this book is to help get the Holy Spirit restored to His place in our lives as our Father and restored to the church as the Father of the church and to be able to walk with Him. And everyone must have a copy. Your life will never be the same. Praise God. So I'm going to try to see if I can share with you three simple things about understanding that will make you know how powerful the key of understanding is. So if you are functioning in the key of understanding, you have a totally different kind of life. Without it, you have struggles. Why is understanding so important? Number one, understanding makes you one of an excellent spirit. It makes you one of an excellent spirit. And when we say you are of an excellent spirit, it, it means a well-groomed and self-controlled spirit and a spirit that is producing the best results no matter what you are involved in. A lot of people are not able to succeed at whatever they do, whether it's a job, it's a home, it's a ministry, it's a schooling, whatever, because they are not functioning as excellent spirits. And the reason is because they are not functioning in understanding. Understanding makes you one who functions in excellence. And when you function in excellence, you have a, a well-groomed and well-regulated attitude. And it imparts you the ability to produce amazing results in anything that is handed over to you. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. It says, He that hath knowledge spares his word, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. So, from knowledge, he goes to understanding. So, you must have knowledge and you must have insight into the knowledge that's understanding. So when you have understanding, you are one of an excellent spirit. Remember when I say when you have, the born again already has all these things. What you need to know is to know that you have them and learn through the Holy Ghost to make them active in your life. 
So when you know that understanding is a key in the kingdom, you don't just go to church and just get knowledge. No, when you get knowledge, you want to, through the Holy Ghost, find out the, the understanding, the insight. You want, to, you want to stir up your understanding. The reason why many Christians don't meditate, because they don't see understanding as important. It is through meditation that you get insight into the knowledge you have. For instance, if you are told that if any man being in Christ is a new creature and you get it, yeah, that's real. But what does that mean? As you brood on that, the Holy Ghost letting you know this new creature is a, is, is, is a divine being. Then what is the meaning of a divine being? He's born of God. What is the meaning? What God can do, he can do. So the thing continues to expand. Then before you realize, you're beginning to think and talk and act as God. Why? Because you now have understanding into if any man be in Christ, a new creature. But if you don't have understanding, it ends at knowledge. You can quote it and get excited, but it doesn't change anything in your life in the physical. A man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Many, many men of God's sons, they do things, you look at the thing and wonder, ah, why is he doing things this way? They are not displaying excellence. Simply because they have not operated in understanding. And when you operate in understanding, life is easy. You don't need to break through in many areas of life. Simply with excellence. Some people have, have, have been fired from job because they messed up. If they were excellent, they would remain there. Some people are not moving forward because they just refuse to be excellent. Why? Lack of understanding. With the key of understanding making you excellent, there are certain fights you won't fight. Some businesses, people will not come there because their delivery is poor. They'll be blaming witches, but the secret is not a witch. It's the lack of understanding, not making them excellent. So if, if such a person functions in understanding, he doesn't need to be breaking through in prayer and fasting. All he needs is operating excellence. You see why we told you that the real Christian life in Christ is an easy one. It's one of keys, not one of struggling always for breaking through. Number two, why understanding such a powerful key in the kingdom of God. Understanding gives you what it takes to draw counsel out of the well of life. As a born again, within you are wells of life. I'll say that Jesus said, he says, if he will give you water and the water he will give you will become a spring of well in you. Bible calls salvation as wells of salvation. Many Christians do not know how to draw water from their wells of salvation. Within them are enormous reserves and reservoirs of verities and great treasure. And they are carrying these things and they are dying on the outside. Why? They lack what it takes to draw from the rich wells inside them. A lot of Christians just do not have the right counsel. So they take decisions anyhow. But with understanding, you'll be able to draw counsel. See, every day is a day of counsel. Every day you have to take a step. Every step you take is based on a certain counsel. Now imagine that your counsels or the directions you get in life are born out of the rich realities of God in you. It means every decision you make is going to be an excellent decision. People messed up in schools, in jobs, in marriages, in businesses, just by the wrong counsel. And the importance of counsel is so much that people need counsel. So people are going to they do stargazing, horoscopes, going to consult people for directions in life. Why? They need counsel in life. But all they simply needed to do is to stir up understanding. Because with understanding, they can draw up counsel from the rich wells of direction inside them. That's the power of the key of understanding. If you function in understanding, you have counsel. Instant counsel. You will know what to do at any time. And you meet, you'll be on the right path at all times. If you are watching me right now, understanding is stirred up in you. But it comes when you begin to brood together with the Holy Ghost on the knowledge that you have. Let's go take a look at Proverbs Chapter 20, verse 5. It says, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Do you see that? So, the born again already has counsel 
Within you, Rama Siki Barakushata. You have counsel in you. It's deep down in your spirit. But the babe, the immature, the one who is not functioning and understanding, is unable to bring out this counsel. So every day is following somebody for direction, 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 getting frustrated. But when you are functioning and understanding, say you will draw counsel out of your own spirit. This is why the key of understanding is so powerful in the kingdom. Let me see if I can say something finally about the key of uh, understanding. It says that understanding is such a powerful key because it has a, you never wander around the regions of death in your life. You know, there are a lot of people that if you summarize their lives, they look, even though they are alive, their lives are as good as dead. All their experiences are experiences of the regions of death. But when someone is functioning in understanding, his life is far away from such experiences. What do we mean by death? Death is a state of inactivity, a state of unprofitableness, a state in which things are not as they should be in the realm of life as ordained by God. People who lack understanding, their lives are as though they were in the regions of death. And it's so painful to know this is, this is someone's life for life. Never coming alive in the regions of life. Go to Proverbs 21 and let's read the 16th verse. Proverbs 21, verse 16. It says, The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Hmm. He says, if you wander from the way of understanding, he says, you will remain in the congregation of the dead. What does that mean? Your life will only be in a region of the experiences of death, where things don't work. You see people that say, whatever I do, it doesn't work. Uh huh. They go from one level to another. Nothing seems to work. Their lives are in the region of death. That's how their experiences are. Why? They have wandered away from understanding. And this is the Old Testament way of communicating. What it actually means is that even though they are born again, they are not functioning in understanding. I have more to have shared with you, but this is to just let you know that understanding is such a powerful key. If a child of God functions in understanding, one, his life will be totally far away from the experiences of death. Two, he will be walking in the exactness of divine counsel. You see, and as uh, we mentioned first, he will function in the spirit of excellence and will be so productive in life. And if you just look at these three things alone, they will, they will bring so much ease in various areas of life where you are trying to break through just because the key of understanding is at work. For instance, if the key of understanding is at work, issues you have with your boss, you claim he doesn't like you, you're praying and fighting to break through. No, excellence just solves it. A business is struggling. You are trying to break through. Just put in excellence. And excellence doesn't come by saying, I want to put in excellence. Function in understanding. You see? If someone says, my life, whatever I do, doesn't work, work. Trying to break through to get your place where things work with. Just function in understanding. So that your life will be far away from the one that looks like those in the congregation of the dead. Someone always makes the wrong steps and loses so much money or other things. No. Function in understanding. Say with me, I function in understanding. Say the understanding in me is stirred up. Say, dear Holy Spirit, by my fellowship with you, I have insight into knowledge and I'm living a glorious life. Oh, hallelujah. If you're watching me on today's episode and you haven't yet received Jesus, this thing I've shared only becomes yours and you can function in them if you are born again, if you are in the kingdom of God, because these are keys of the kingdom of God. Everyone who is born a human was made for the kingdom. The Bible said that the kingdom was prepared for you before the world began in Matthew 25. And through the new birth only can you enter the kingdom. Even though it was prepared for you, if you don't get born again, you don't enter. And when you enter, then you begin to learn these keys so that you can have an easy life in the kingdom. You can have a simple life in the kingdom. Because that's the life for you. If you're not born again, 
If you want to enter into the kingdom, it is simple. Believe that Jesus Christ died, was raised from the dead, and ascended into heaven and his Lord. And declare this with all your heart, and you'll be born again and become a citizen of the kingdom of God. I want to do that, say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I believe that you died, you rose again, and you ascended into heaven. Jesus, you are Lord of life. And by this declaration, I am born again. You have done that, you are truly born again. Make sure you get planted in the Bible teaching church and remain in Christ till he comes. By the grace of God, we are going to go forward in our next episode and look at another key of the kingdom that will make your life very simple and effective. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binder. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, Final Global Movement. Dot org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.